Hey everypony, I decided on making a general OC lore universe lore video before I start to expand onto describing the characters within universe. So, this video is going to be dedicated to my OC universe, which I refer to as Obscura. I'll start off by explaining the name I use to describe it, being Obscura. It is a random mishmash word that I use to describe the universe, and it turned into the name of the um, county or area that the main cast happens to live in. So, going on, Obscura is a fictional county in central Florida containing the large metropolitan city, Sunrise Beach, which is where Ash and the main cast happen to reside. If you are curious about specific visuals or even other specific details, I actually have an OC lore website that I call Obscura.com, which happens to just be <laughs> the name of the OC uh, universe, and then .com. And I just put everything there rather than Toy House sometimes because I, uh, I'm, I'm living my life as I live it, man. And I'll be, like, upfront. <laughs> In universe, I decided to mash the concepts of Silent Hill and Gravity Falls alongside of that of, you know, the weird concept of Florida man, Florida happenings, Florida goofiness, all into one. And I made it my OC setting, of course mixing it with the visuals that I happen to prefer. And we call, we call the main, the main city Sunrise Beach. Sunrise Beach is the big city of big city Kinoshiras. Like, think about it. Think about it. Now, obviously, as it is set in Florida, the setting happens to be humid, it's wet, it's swampy. The weather, think it gets warm, it gets cool, but it's rain, it's hurricanes, there's fog. There's a lot of fog in Obscura. I, I nabbed it from Silent Hill, my friend. The main cast contains characters that happen to be human and non-human. Generally, the human populace within the character's universe, the OC universe, the human populace thinks that humans are the main populace. They are the main people populating the world, this area. It isn't quite the case, at least not in Obscura. It, uh, there's a lot of monster population. There's a lot of non-human population going on in Obscura. To start off, the main, like, species that is not human that I decide to, uh, give a name to is, uh, well, we have a parasite, okay? We have a parasite who decided to create healers. And when I say that, I mean it came into physical contact with some people and they became what I call healers. And healers basically make monsters. The healers, an example, uh, the only three existing in universe are Ananta, Yun, and Amani. They are the only ones who can create their own types of monsters. Um, Ananta happens to have the middle stable uh, ability. Ananta has the most average of the monsters. Yun happens to have the most stable monsters. They happen to be more physically human. Um, Amani happens to have the most unstable monsters coming from their hands. Um, the monsters coming from Amani happen to have more unstable physical forms, so they will glitch out a little bit. These also happen to stem from the personalities of each character and their emotional states, uh, especially at the time of creating whatever healed monster they decide to create. So there are also the healed, and the main characters that I have as examples are Bailey, Valentine, and Wakana. There are other monsters as well, like vampires. The examples I have are Vladimir, Mikhail, Iris, um, there are fey folk, there are fairies essentially. There are zombies. There, there are other things within the universe, but they're all very humanoid looking, at least. At least for the 
the the you know the main portion now ash is my main character and they happen to fall under a category called corruption ash corrupted the folds of reality in my sewing machine or whatever to be born because there's some type of combination of human and healed being coming from if i remember right amani so a type of monster human hybrid and you know elliot being ash's twin falls under this category as well so now we're gonna go into the main cast which happens to be mostly non-human but there is a bit of a mixture there's when i say that i mean there's like one human the main difference between the humans and the non-humans happen to usually be lifespan, physical abilities, that's about it. But the physical ability descriptor is very, very vague, and it refers to both like changing your physical form, it refers to as well as like slow aging in some cases, maybe even in other cases fast aging. So um, Ash and Elliot, they're corruptions as previously stated, and they are corruptions through birth. Bailey happened to become healed through a freak accident, and he was healed by Ananta. Valentine happened to become healed through Bailey's doing. Wakana became healed through Bailey's doing. And as you can tell through the last two, Bailey obviously likes exploiting the vulnerable, vulnerable people to quote unquote heal. He really likes uh, individuals who are easy to manipulate. All healers within the universe become infected through the parasite through physical contact so this happens to be the case passing down usually unless you're a corruption if you are healed you happen to be turn you, you can become healed through physical contact if you are a healer you become a healer through physical contact there's all there's all some form of touch in there and um Unfortunately, there's also a lot of brutality in that touch, because a lot of the characters who happen to become healed, as the word may imply, they were suffering to result in needing that healing. Okay, recap recap. We start with a parasite, the parasite touches someone, that someone becomes a healer. We have three healers, we have one parasite. So think of it like a family tree. We touch someone, they become a lesser version of a monster, but they touch others and infect them more. And the main population of the monsters in question happen to be called healed. So Bailey is healed, Valentine is healed, Wakana is healed, Ash's dad is healed. There are other characters, like outliers to the corruption uh, quality, such as Lottie who happens to be a baker in universe, and she was corrupted through a confrontation with Amani after being healed by Yoon. So two healers happened to come into contact with Lottie and it corrupted her very physical being. So she just kind of became silly, silly in her physical form. Um, another example of a corruption and one of the only other corruptions in universe happens to be Kamala, who happens to also be a corruption through birth just like ash and elliot but kamala is a more rare variant of corruption born to ananta a healer after ananta gained their healer status um and well born to ananta and someone who is considered healed so recapping there, Kamala happens to be a very rare corruption born to a non-human and another non-human who are not able to reproduce. And I guess to like conclude the video, I will happen to answer a question that I get asked a lot that I thought was clear, but um, I can understand not interpreting it as such. The setting of Obscura takes place in modern society, post-2020, um, as prior stated, Central Florida. So we've got cell phones, we've got internet, all the characters are like chronically online. We're, we're living the good stuff. Thank you guys for listening so much.